Olivier Messiaen was a French composer who lived from 1908 to 1992. In 1944, he published a book called The Technique of My Musical Language, in which he discusses a lot of his approaches to musical composition. In this book, he compiled a list of what he called modes of limited transposition. These are scales that contain an inherent symmetry, where if you rotate your starting pitch in the scale, you encounter the same mode or pattern of intervals more than once. Whereas with a major scale, for instance, there is a unique mode for every degree of the scale. According to Messiaen, only seven modes of limited transposition are mathematically possible in our Western system of 12-tone equal temperament. Any others you could come up with would be considered derivatives of these seven. If you've been following me for a while, you may have seen my previous videos on the first two modes in Messiaen's list. Messiaen mode one is the whole tone scale. Messiaen mode two is the octatonic diminished scale. Messiaen mode three is Messiaen mode three. There's not really another name for it. It's usually just called mode three. You could also call it a non-atonic scale because it's a scale of nine notes, but that doesn't exclusively refer to this scale. This is what it sounds like. Pretty dense sound, isn't it? There's a lot going on here, so let's pull it apart and see how this thing works. You might be surprised at how palatable this scale can be. It just takes a bit of exploration to find sounds you like in here. We can look at the pattern of intervals first. Starting at C, we have a whole step, two half steps, the whole step, two half steps, the whole step, and two half steps. So you should be able to see the symmetry that occurs here. Essentially, you have three tetrachords, or sequences of four notes, made up of a whole step and then two half steps. If I were to start this scale on E or A flat, I'd end up with the exact same pattern of whole half half three times. The only way to get other modes out of this would be to start on D, G, or B flat. This would give us half half whole three times. Or we could start on E flat G or B, that would give us half whole half three times. So this scale has three modes, despite having nine notes in it. It can also only be transposed into other keys a limited number of times. Like if I took my original one and transposed it to E, nothing has changed because it's all the same notes. Compare that to transposing from the key of C major to E major. In that case, you have some notes that are different because major scales aren't symmetrical. We can only transpose this scale four times. I could start this whole half-half sequence on C, C-sharp, D, or D-sharp. Once I get to E, I'm repeating myself. So to keep score, this scale has three modes and four transpositions. Let's look at some of our harmonic possibilities. The typical method of building chords out of every other note of a scale kind of breaks down here because we're no longer stacking intervals of a third. That's just a side effect of having so many notes so close together. We can do it though, and we get some cool sounds. But if we ignore that typical method, we can actually build quite a few diatonic harmonies and others on each degree of the scale. To give you an idea, we'll see what's available with C as the root. C diminished, C minor, C major, C augmented, even C sus two. We can make all of our root third fifth triads on one pitch. If we expand to seventh chords, we can do C minor seven flat five, C minor seven, C seven, C major seven, C minor major seven, C major seven sharp five. That's almost everything. The only thing we can't do is a fully diminished seventh chord. We would need A in the scale and we don't have that. This was just building off of one note. All of these chord qualities repeat if we're building off E or A flat because that's where the whole half-half pattern starts over. And obviously you can do this again with D and E flat to find some other chord qualities because those notes start the two other modes of this scale. It won't be exactly the same, but you'll find a similar situation where you can build a lot of different chord qualities on just those two notes. I'm not gonna do that for fear of making this video unnecessarily long, but definitely explore it on your own. So what do you do with this scale? There's a lot you could do with it. You should already be able to tell that this scale possesses a lot of harmonic fluidity, and you can use it to create some incredibly lush sounds and some very dissonant sounds. It's all in there. Messiaen himself used it as a basis for many of his compositions. 
all of his note choices and harmonies would come from a single mode three set of pitches. He did this with all seven of those modes on his list. This is a way of writing atonal music, or music that doesn't have a tonal center. The sky is the limit when you get into doing that sort of thing. I've composed a few atonal pieces myself using similar methods. To get a sense of Messiaen's approach with this stuff, I would suggest checking out what is probably his most famous work, the Quartet for the End of Time. Hardcore jazz improvisers also love it due to its harmonic fluidity. Think about all the different chord qualities we built off of one note in the scale. You can play this scale over any of those chords and it'll work. It's just a matter of whether or not you like the flavor it gives off at that moment. I think the best time to use something like this would be if you're hanging on a single chord for several bars. If you just toss in some mode three stuff for like half a measure, the effect is probably going to be lost because it went by so quickly. But if you're hanging on the five chord for a while, that's a great time to use it. The scale has a lot of uncertainty baked into it just because no degree can be perceived as the tonal center, which complements the tension of the five chord. And because it's so harmonically fluid, you can weave in and out of the modality of the chord you're playing over, which again, amps up the tension and uncertainty, which will be that much more satisfying when it reaches its resolution. Explore it. Go nuts. See what you can do with it. There's so much to discover here. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.